Good afternoon, everybody. Aquatic here with The Real Report. Today's video is an extension to a couple days ago talking about farming food famine. So the title of this one is an article by Michael on the Economic Collapse blog. And it is, here is why 37% of U.S. farmers in the western half of the country are killing their own crops. Now, I think this is extremely important to highlight again, which is why we're going to go over this. And then later today, I think I'm going to put out a second video and probably go over China, Middle East, Europe, and domestic news, and probably some Russia, Ukraine. But keeping on the topic of food, food doesn't just magically show up at the grocery store. No, duh. If farmers and ranchers do not produce it, we do not eat it. Funny story here. You guys are not going to believe this one. Uh, I was once in the grocery store talking to a woman, the cashier, and mentioned something about farm fresh eggs. And I kid you not, the cashier looks at me and says, I would never eat those. Those come from a chicken. To which my jaw about hit the floor and essentially uh, just smiled and waved and left. Uh, absolutely unbelievable how out of touch with reality uh, most of the population is and they have absolutely no idea where our food comes from. So keep that in mind when you're talking to some people. Uh, they're out there. Now, this uh, guy Michael says, I know that I've been writing about the rapidly growing global food crisis a lot lately, but that is because this is a really big deal. All over the globe, agricultural production is going to be below expectations in 2022. As a result, those of us that live in wealthy countries will pay much more for food in 2023, while many of those that live in poor countries will either deeply suffer or die. In fact, children are already dropping dead from starvation in large numbers in parts of South uh, parts of Africa, but most Americans haven't heard about this because they aren't showing it on the news. Of course, this isn't just a crisis for poor countries on the other side of the planet because this is going to happen here, and I'm going to uh, reiterate some of the same points in Sunday's video. Here in the United States, the food that is not being grown in 2022 will cause immense economic pain in 2023. We already are experiencing shortages due to this same issue on a smaller scale from 2020, 2021, and now this year, it's even worse. There are 17 western states that collectively produce almost half of our food, and right now those 17 states are being absolutely devastated by the worst multi-year mega drought in 1,200 years. 17 states, including north of Texas, up along the central plains to North Dakota and west to California, are vital to the U.S. agricultural sector, supporting nearly half of the nation's uh, production. Again... I'm going to reiterate a couple of these numbers because I really think it's important to get this into people's heads. 74% of beef cattle, 18% of the agricultural production by value, 50% of dairy production, 11% of the U.S. agricultural production, 80% of wheat production, 70% of vegetable, fruit, tree, nut production, and these drought conditions, which have persisted well into 2022, put production of these commodities at risk, along with the stability of farms, ranches, and local economies, reliant on crops, livestock, and downstream products and services for income. Now, this year's drought conditions are taking a harder toll than last year's, as 37% of farmers said they are plowing through and killing existing crops that won't reach maturity because of dry conditions. Now, he highlights, do you understand what that is saying? This is why I'm making another video on it. 37% of all farmers in the western half of the country are killing their own crops because the crops won't even reach maturity because of this endless 1,200-year record-breaking drought says here, I was absolutely floored when I first saw that figure. And that same survey also found the staggering numbers of ranchers in some western states have been selling off their cattle. We can go over here, even on CNN Business. American farmers are killing their own crops and selling cows because of extreme drought. Nearly three quarters of U.S. farmers say this year's drought is hurting their harvest. With significant crop and income loss, according to a new survey by the American Farm Bureau Federation, a lobbying group that represents agricultural interest. Again, 
To reiterate, this year's drought conditions are taking a harder toll than last year's, as 37% of farmers said they are plowing through and killing existing crops. That is a jump from 24% last year, according to the survey. So, that's why last year we had shortages, but they weren't too extreme. And now, that number is substantially higher. Again, this is even on CNN Business from August 18th. Say here, July was the third hottest on record for the U.S. and ranked in the top 10 for every state in the West except for Montana. Uh, the AFBF estimates nearly 60% of the West, South, and Central Plains are experiencing severe drought or higher this year. Not really sure what is higher than severe drought. Uh, selling off their herds, farmers in Texas are being forced to sell off their cattle and herds earlier than normal due to extreme drought, which we knew now. Lone Star State reported the largest reduction in herd size, down 50%, followed by New Mexico and Oregon at 43% and 41%, not respectively. We haven't had this kind of a movement of cows to market in a decade since 2011, which was our last really big drought, said David Anderson, a professor of agricultural economics at Texas A&M. A Access to water for livestock has been a key issue for farmers and ranchers this year, with 57% reporting local restrictions on water use compared to 50% of farmers last year. Key water sources in places like Lake Mead and Lake Powell, which are running below 30% of their capacity, typically provide water to 5.5 million acres of land, which are no longer receiving that water. Talking about the Colorado River will operate in a tier two shortage condition for the first time starting in January. That means Arizona, Nevada, and Mexico will have to further reduce their water usage from the Colorado River. High inflation makes it harder for ranchers to salvage their land, and the cost of diesel is falling but still high, making it significantly more expensive to truck in additional water than in years past. The price for fertilizer for grass and crops and feed for animals also remains expensive, and not just expensive, still inflating higher and higher. U.S. consumers can expect to spend more on certain food products because of the drought, according to the report. For cattle and beef, once the market processes the excess animals sent to slaughter and has a smaller breeding herd to operate off of, this could be six months to well over a year. Listen, guys, if you see ground beef on sale, steaks, you name it, you guys need to be stocking up, freezing, canning, whatever, uh, because... <laughs> Uh, I don't know how else to put this. It's going to skyrocket next year. U.S. consumers can expect to spend more on certain food products because of the drought. And again, it's not just beef. It's going to be corn, vegetables, peppers. You name it. Everything that gets farmed out west. Every crop. They're also having this problem with potatoes in the U.K. They're having this problem with, I think, 37% of vegetables in France aren't going to make it. I mean, this is seriously a catastrophic global crisis that's going to be developing. Fruits, nuts, vegetables overwhelmingly come from the states with high levels of drought, but farmers have been forced to forego planting or destroy orchards. Guys, think about that. These products, produce that grow on the trees take a decade sometimes to get to the point where you can harvest anything significant off of them take an apple tree for example you're not going to get much on a tree younger than five seven years and it's still a small tree this will likely result in american consumers paying more for these goods and either partially relying on foreign supplies or shrinking the diversity of items they buy at the store again less products we are rapidly turning into a third world country. California grows 80% of the world's supply of almonds, limiting other places U.S. consumers can buy the popular nut, and shifting where almonds can grow is not easy, as the crop needs a specific climate and soil. In general, the outlook for 2022 crop volume is more pessimistic than a month ago, and much more than two months ago. A July report from the Almond Board of California notes the key culprits were drought, lower water supply, and the removal of orchards you can't just instantly get those back same with cows you sell off your breeding herd it's going to take you three years just to get back to some sort of capacity bureau of labor statistics august inflation report shows u.s consumers are spending 9.3 percent more on fruits and vegetables from a year ago and i can tell you that is complete and utter horseshit 
because I am paying bare minimum 30 to 60% more for the products, even in stores such as Aldi's, let alone anything like Heinen's, Giant Eagle, or heck, even Walmart. Half of the items there that bread-based have gone up 50%. So hopping back over into this article to wrap this video up, uh, thanks to the unending economic symptoms of the pandemic and 2022's inflation double punch, average beef prices are currently about twice what they were in 2019. Add in the deepening widespread drought, a shortage of hay and feed, skyrocketing prices, transport costs, and various other metrics, some southwest Oklahoma beef producers suggest cheap crown beef could eventually top $50 a pound. $50 a pound. Can you and your family afford that? I certainly can't. I hope you can. Can you imagine paying $50 for a pound of ground beef? Even now we're being told that U.S. consumers are increasingly switching to chicken. Now, I'm going to skip the rest of the article. Um, go watch my video from Sunday if you want some more uh, on that type of content. But the bottom line is prepare. It's coming. Stock up. Freeze. Store. Can. Uh, bucket. Grains. Rice pasta, etc. I wish I had some better news, but you know, I would rather you guys know what's coming and I would rather harp on it, make sure that, you know what, I tried to warn people and that's about all I can do. So if you guys find anything in this video interesting, please consider dropping a like, uh, hit that subscribe button with the notification bell to stay up to date. I try and you know, I proof watch every video, make sure it's content I would want to listen to, things that I think are important that Everyone should be paying attention to. So if you guys like that, stick around. Catch you guys on the next one.